What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to another video today. Guys, I cannot believe how highly requested this video is. When I did it, I just did it because I wanted to make my tutorial a little bit more fun and of course to grab your attention. But, you know, I grabbed a little bit too much of your attention because the whole comment section was filled with I want a hologram tutorial. I want to know how to do a hologram. So yeah. Guess what we're doing today? But, 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 um, it is going to look a little bit different from the clip in that video. What's up, What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome, here. Back, Welcome back, to back to another video. Because I created that in both Premiere Pro and After Effects. But because I realized that not everyone has access to the entire Adobe suite, I recreated it in Premiere Pro only. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more accessible. So that's one thing. Second thing, we need a few things like a screen recording. And if you're worried about your screen recording not being accurate, because in my case, the screen recording doesn't have the Peter McKinnon video in it. What you can do is, for example, lower the opacity. So make it look more transparent so you don't see everything that's on the screen recording or you can make it a little bit blurry for the purpose of this video I'm just showing you how you can recreate this hologram look now that I've got that out of the way let's let's create some cool stuff before we start, we need a few things. We need a video that you want to pop up, like I use Peter McKinnon in my example. We need a clip of you where you're interacting with the hologram. And you need a screen recording of your phone. So make sure that you do that. If you cannot screen record anything on your phone, there's apps out there. I'll put one on the screen so that you can download that and you can make your screen recording. And then you also need some sound effects. You need a tab effect, you need a whoosh and I like to use kind of like a science fiction ambient sound. So now we're going to drag our first clip to the timeline and it's a little bit awkward because I'm actually not doing anything. I hate to break it to you, but it's all fake. It's, there is no hologram. But yeah, so exposed. We need to select the in and out points of the screen recording that we took and we want to drag that to the timeline as well. Don't worry too much about the size right now, we're going to resize it later. So the first effect that I'm going to apply is the crop effect. That is totally optional, you can skip it if you want. The reason why I am doing it is because I don't like the time and the battery and all. I don't, I don't want that, I just want the YouTube app. So I'm just gonna slide it a little bit, make sure that the top part looks good and the bottom part looks good. Now the fun starts. So we want the screen recording to look a little bit blue, bluish, greenish. So we're going to recolor the screen recording and we can do this in two ways. For both, we need to type in the effects panel RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. For this one, you can choose RGB curves or color balance and then in between brackets RGB. Now I'm going to show you the curves first. What you see is you get four curves and when you grab one of those lines and you change them, as you can see, the colors change. Now, because not everyone knows how to read a curve properly, I would suggest going for color balance RGB, which is what we're going to do in this video, because in that case, all you have to do is slide it to the right or to the left to either bring in more of a color or reduce the color. I'm just going to quickly delete the curves. And now, as you can see, what I'm doing is I am just playing with the values. I don't really have any specific values. First, I am eliminating the red and then I'm just playing with the green and the blue until I'm satisfied with the look. The next step is we're going to add some wave warp. And if you add this to your clip, what you're going to see is these waves that we don't want because what we want is we want horizontal lines that distort the image to make it look a little bit more digital. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to wave type and we're going to select square. And as you can see, you get vertical bars and we want horizontal bars. So we're going to go to direction and we're going to change the direction to zero. I don't know about you, but these bars are a little bit too thick for me. So we need to change that. But first, I'm quickly going to change the wave height and I'll explain to you what it does in a second. I like my wave width to be about five, but again, there is not exact values that you need to use. You just use this as a guideline. 
And what the wave height does is it separates the two images. We want them to be a little bit separated, but we still want everything to be clear. So I go for a value of like five or six, but again, you can do whatever you want. If you want some movement in your distortion, what you can do is keyframe the face. And then what you do is you just slide it and you slide it and the numbers don't really matter. But what you get then is kind of like what I said, like a moving distortion. But I'm just gonna keep it simple and I'm just not gonna do that. But feel free to do that. So if you ask me, it looks pretty decent already, but we're not there yet. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to flip it horizontally. And this is super easy. Just type in flip, select horizontal flip, drag it to your clip and you're done. Now we're going to a fun effect and it's a little bit time consuming if you want to be precise. So take all the time that you need. But this effect is called corner pin. And if you don't see the four corners, just go to your effects control and click on the corner pin effect and then it will appear. What this effect does is that it changes the perspective of your clip. So that's very useful because we want it to look like it popped out of my phone and this does not look like it popped out of my phone. This effect does require some precise work. If you want to get it right, it's going to take some time. So don't worry about it. Just pause the video, make sure that it looks good and then we can continue to the next step. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I think I think I broke a sweat. That took a while. So now that we've done that, we need to change the opacity. Go to your effects control and make sure that you click on the little clock so that there is no keyframe. So that when you change the opacity, you change the opacity for the entire clip instead of just a part of the clip. Finally, before we can move on to the rest of the work, because we're not done yet, this is only the beginning, but it's fun. Remember that it's fun and the result will be rewarding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some glow to it. So just type in glow. Not, don't type in what I just typed in. That's, oh God. Okay, type in glow, choose alpha glow. And now you will see a white glow that we desperately need to change to the colors of the clip. Now we can do two things. We can either choose the color manually or we can just use this little eyedropper and we take color from the screen. After you've set the colors, you can play around with the glow and the brightness and just do this until you're satisfied with the look. Okay, so the visual part of this clip is done. Now what we need to do is we need to synchronize it with our clip. So with the action that I'm doing, whether I'm scrolling or tapping, we need to make sure that those two align. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through my base shot or foundation shot. And I'm gonna add some markers to every time that I do something, whether it is whooshing Peter McKinnon away, bye Peter McKinnon, I'm sorry about that. I still love you. But whether we're doing that or we're just scrolling or we're tapping or whatever you are doing, that is where you wanna set a marker. Now I'm just going to cut the clip in pieces and what I'm gonna do basically is that I'm either going to speed the clip up or I'm going to slow it down to make it look like I'm actually controlling the hologram. So I am sure that this is not the most professional way of doing it. We're not here to be professionals. We're here to have fun and to make some cool holograms. We are almost done with this part. What we need to do now is we want to make this hologram pop out of the phone. So we need to resize it and we need to reposition it. So what you want to do is you want to determine the end position, which is what it is in right now. And you want to set keyframes. So the first step that we're going to take is we are going to add some keyframes. Now we're going to the beginning of the clip and we need to scale it down to zero. But before I scale it down to zero, I just make it smaller to about 17%. And then I'm going to reposition it because when you scale it down to zero, you won't see the clip anymore. Oh, <gasps> okay. So we're done with the first part. Now we have to work on the clip that we want to pop up. And as you can see at the beginning of the video, I chose the lovely Peter McKinnon. I'm not going to show you everything because I'm just going to do all the same steps that we've just gone through. You know how to do it by now. All right, we're back. Basically what's happening right now is I tab and then Peter McKinnon shows up and I'm watching a little bit. I'm like, bye Peter, I want to watch something else. So I wish him away. And to make that wish look good, what we need to do is resize and reposition the clip. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through it frame by frame and I'm going to reposition and scale it down. When something moves fast, we always see some blur. So we want to recreate this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the effects panel and we're going to 
type in directional blur or blur or dire or something that I'm typing in right now. Once you've added the directional blur, you can see that there is a direction and a blur length. The blur length really is how blurry you want the footage to be and the direction is, well, the direction of the blur. So in this case, I'm gonna go for minus 90, uh, basically because it's moving horizontally. And what we wanna do is we want to keyframe this because we don't want the entire clip to be blurry. We want it to be blurry when I swipe him away. That looks good, guys. The visual part is done. Now we need to work on the sound design. We need our sound effects. We need a tap, a whoosh, and I like to add an ambient effect to make the hologram sound more real. You can find these sound effects anywhere. You can find copyright free sound effects on YouTube. You can also find them on Epidemic Sound if you want to pay for a subscription or you already have a subscription. They have really good sound effects there too. But before we add our sound effects, I want to go back to Peter McKinnon's clip because now it doesn't sound like what a hologram would sound like to me to another video today. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the effect high pass. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to another video. Now I'm not really gonna change anything because it sounds good to me, but you can change the values if you want to. The next thing that I'm gonna do is quite overlooked, but it shouldn't be overlooked because it's actually quite important to your sound design. And that is that in this case, the video of Peter McKinnon is on this side. So we need the sound to come out of this speaker only and not out of both speakers. But this is really easy to do. Under audio effects, we're gonna go to channel volume and then we're going to mute the right one and the left one, we're just gonna keep it as it is. It is sound effect time. The first effect that I'm gonna use is the whoosh. And I'm just gonna trim it a little bit and I'm just gonna make sure that it aligns with the movement. I'm also going to lower the volume a little bit. I'm gonna go to minus 15, but it totally depends on the audio levels of your effect. I'm going to use this whoosh effect a few times. I'm going to use it when it pops up. I'm going to use it when I'm scrolling. So if you select the sound effect, you press Alt and then you drag it, you actually made a copy of it. So this is really easy. Now we're going to do the same thing for the tap sound effect. Don't forget to lower the volume of this one because we've just been copying the other one. So all the effects are the same, but now we've got a completely new sound effect. So we need to adjust the volume for this one too. If it happens that you didn't align your clips properly, don't worry, you can go to the effects control, you can select all the keyframes and then you can just move them a little bit on the timeline. Okay, now it is time to add the ambient effect and go through the entire clip, make sure everything looks good. and it looks good to me. This was it guys. If you like this hologram tutorial, please show your appreciation in the comment section and make sure to subscribe and like and do all the YouTube stuff and I'll see you next time.